I mean, I just asked Tony earlier. <laughs> I said I could start with your junior drag team. Oh. <laughs> He's got to have a development program. <laughs> Rico Abreu joining us here in the Freak Nation. So many things. This is going to be only about a 15-minute interview, dude, but we could go 50 minutes yeah, we, with we all the madness that's about to happen yeah. with you. Well, let's start off with number number one bomb that you dropped. What are you not doing in January? I'm, uh, for the first time in my career, I'm skipping the Chili Bowl to attend some races in Australia. So it was, um, it was just logistically hard for me to go back and forth. So I just decided to um, sacrifice the Chili Bowl which, uh, you know, I have no issues with the event or anything going on there. It's always treated me very well. Lots of success there, you know, winning it twice and lots of prelim wins. So I'm, um, I'm never counting that event out. I just am changing it up the pace this year and or next year and going. Uh, Is it money? Sprint car racing. In Is Australia. it money? No, I just, I just want to change the experience yeah. up. Um, I enjoy sprint car racing. I enjoy racing at the Chili Bowl. I mean, it was just. Um, like I said, logistically, it was just tough to get back and do the Chili Bowl and then go. I want to run the Grand Annual Classic, which is like Australians Knoxville Nationals and do some races at Perth. I'm bringing some close friends with me. And I didn't feel like for how committed I was into sprint car racing that it was fair that we just did the Australia trip half ass. So, I mean, no, I mean, because that's been a thing at the same time as Chili Bowl for many, many years. So it's probably been in the back of your head for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I went in 2012 and then I went back with Keith Coons in 17 mm. and did a few races uh, after yeah. the Chili Bowl. Uh, but this time I'm going to be gone for 30 days. It's going to be a long trip. So I'm, so I'm, uh, I'm dreading it a little bit um, being away from Gus and Megan and my family that yeah. long. I mean, oh, so they're, they're not going to make the trip. No, at all. it's just me and. My best friend and two of my good friends are going. No, Gus. Yeah, no, nah, it's. Oh. It, I hate to think about it because. <laughs> oh, that's your that's your it's, boy. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, I would maybe next year I can bring him with me. That's true. Get your feet wet this year. See kind of how the travel could work out, and then yeah, you never know. Yeah. Never. Gus, know. of course, being his dog, his yep. gorgeous. What kind of dog? He's a micro golden doodle. He's gorgeous. So we take That's him what he is. everywhere with us. Micro golden. Yeah, he's twenty pounds. Wow. He's about this tall. And yeah, I'm a, a sprint car driver. I've got a micro doodle. Right. He's he's a cool dog. <laughs> he is a very cool dog. He has his own merchandise line. He has his own stickers. Yeah. He's yeah. Rico Abreu, sprint car pilot, joining us here in the Freak Nation. Sorry, Stat Man. Now, I. I've got to ask you, I never ask a sprint car driver this, but I've been offered chances to drive sprint cars, you know, like in media kinds of things. But I've always said no, because guys that know what they're doing, bounce them into the parking lot. <laughs> you got to have some giant huevos to, <laughs> to drive those things like you do. I enjoy getting to drive them. They are fast. Um, they are dangerous. It's it's important that we respect the vehicles we're driving and but how do you respect a thousand horsepower and a thousand pounds <laughs> Just, I, i've been lucky enough to be around some good people that have educated me about the sport and how about Educate the cars me one i just one. Uh, i think that it's very important to have throttle control and patience when you're racing sprint cars and understanding the drivers around you and the environment you're in at that particular time instance on the racetrack and understanding the development of the race, never putting yourself in bad positions out on the race. Are there guys on the track that you won't race with? Uh, there's guys on the track that I am ultra cautious with racing with. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So Do they are... know who they are? Uh, I have doubt you, it. Have you told them? I know them who they are. To. I pay attention. I, have you told them? To, hey, dude. Uh, the ones I want to help, I, I don't <laughs> mind telling them. Yeah, I think it's important that people understand that that absolutely yeah it only I mean, makes the sport better and yeah. safer now you talk about knowing the drivers around you is the australia month going to be something where you have to look at tape this to find is, out who these guys are it's all new to me so yeah. i haven't raced a sprint car in australia in over 10 years and the people that i was racing the gentleman that, and and the gentleman that i was racing with um they're not there they're not really that era is gone now you know it's Mm -hmm. Robbie Farr and I know Robbie Farr is probably still racing but um you know a few of those guys is I don't pay attention to much of the the style of racing in Australia which 
as my travel time over there, I think I can do a little bit of homework and is there understand. a different style? Um, no, but the tracks are a lot flatter. You know, it's more of an oval shaped stuff of of rounder and flatter, and they have like concrete guardrails, no tractor tires that divide the infield from the. So it's just different style of racing. Oh, that makes me think yeah. immediately race more cautiously, but you can't race cautiously, can you? Uh, yeah, you just, I mean, you just have to understand like yeah. who you're racing with. And Whew. I don't want to race cautiously. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't be a good, I mean, it just exactly. It, 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 it is, cautious I know. But when I hear cars. concrete and no tires, I'm like, yeah. Racing scared is not the place to be okay. out on the exactly. track. Exactly. That's not a race car. Yeah. <laughs> Rico or Bruce, Sprint Car Pilot, joining us, Freak Radio Network and on MAV TV. High Limit making a whole lot of news over the last couple of weeks. Brad Sweet, Kyle Larson. Bam! It's a direct competitor to World of Outlaws. Some people say it's not. Some people, well, okay. The days of the week. You're, you've committed to running the full series. Where's the, I know where the beef is. Where's the beef from a driver's perspective between World of Outlaws and high limit racing? Um, You know, it, is it, it sensitive? No, not necessarily. I think there's an internal structure issues, um, you know, and, and high limit will run into those same issues that World of Outlaws are dealing with. At the end of the day, everybody wants more money, right? So, um, you know, you get conflict there between team owners and race car drivers, and uh, you, and you understand who really has the pool in this game, and it's and it's the pay per view or the television rights, and then the series, and then the owners that are supporting each series, then the drivers that are racing for the owners. So, um, I, you know, I I think it's an important for me, a person like me that sees. Uh, a great vision of this sport to support Kyle and Brad and what they're doing for the industry of sprint car racing, just the industry of racing in general, the viewership levels that Kyle can bring from the crossover stuff from NASCAR to sprint car racing. And I think it all uplifts everybody. Um, you know, me ra getting to race with Kyle a lot this year, I it helped my brand grow um, into markets that I never even knew about. And, and being able to compete against them, race head to head with them. You get all those people watching that. And it's people now that I didn't even know were fans of mine are, are purchasing t-shirts or becoming fans because of somebody like that coming into our sport and elevating it. And uh, it it's just, I feel like it's a healthy direction for all of us. And I got to ask you, I've talked to drag racers who had trouble getting money from promoters when they're out just you're attached with a series now, so that's not an issue. But have you ever gone out to a racetrack and the promoter didn't have the money when you were finished and yet somebody's got to say, look, I got to get paid here. I've never been in that. I've never leveraged myself for to get paid really to, uh, to race. Um, I just look at it as, um, you know, if the track's willing to help me out with passes to get in or a little bit of tow money um, to get my team there, then... I think that goes a long ways. And if I have the access and the ability to bring my merchandise to the races, um, I'm going to do it myself and promote my own brand and get people to show up and focus on selling them a T-shirt while I'm there. So when the promoter That's at the end I of the night, money. you won the race and you go to the, to the shack to get your money and the guy says, I ain't got it. Uh -oh. You're going to smile and say, I've sold enough. No, nah, I'm not, but I've never <laughs> ran into that issue. The series better be paying me or I'm not going to be coming back. We'll it is some, a PR nightmare. We'll have some big issues there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know it's happened. I know it's happened. But there's still today. a stigma about West Coast racing. Uh, and I don't get it because there's 50 million people on the West Coast. You, Kyle Larson, uh, Brad, Brad Sweet. Sweet. Jeff Gordon, I can go on and on of, of dudes Kevin that Harvick, have, Jimmy Johnson. that have had success on dirt, NASCAR, IndyCar. So these races with high and mid on the West Coast, like what took you so freaking long? There's a lot. I, of, I say the same thing, right? I think you see the 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 California drivers and their success, just the different avenues they've come from. You know, Kyle, Brad, and I coming from the outlaw, the caged cart world, where they had Cycle and Speedway and Red Bluff, where there was. It was healthy, healthy race, youth racing. Uh, and then you see guys like Jimmy Johnson and Legends and karting, um, you know, Jeff Gordon and sprint car and midgets and go-karts. And um, that's very healthy in California and that younger generation. That There's great avenues for them to um, race a lot and, and race around some good drivers 
which only elevates your talent level when you're yeah, racing against great talent every weekend and it's tough competition. That's what makes those drivers so good. Well, that was that was my beef with World of Outlaws is you're just neglecting the West yeah. Coast. Up and down California, up to Seattle. You've got all those Lots of tracks. good tracks. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't plan the schedules. I just, <laughs> I just show up. I like to support West Coast sure. racing. I'm going to go out there twice this year to race or next year to race. And Do you know your schedule for 2024 or does it's it build? Done. It's on my website. All of it. Every yeah. single race. How, what kind, what what series will you be running in? I got sixty high limit races okay. and about twenty World of Outlaw races. Okay, Six, I'm going to assume Jesus. Pennsylvania is big on there because you're a big Pennsylvania guy. Big Pennsylvania, yeah. I'll be at Williams Grove, Port Royal, Lincoln, yeah. all the good tracks. Those fans are very happy to They're hear that right passionate, now. Passionate, passionate races. They love them some Rico. I'm ready. <laughs> I know we've asked you this before, but who is your favorite driver of all time? Um, all, I'm a big fan of Parnelli Jones. Again, California. Yeah. yeah. He is my hero. Why? Uh, just his diverse driving skills, his success, Indianapolis 500. Um, Over Andretti? I got, oh. I like Mario. Mario's really good. <laughs> I just am a big Parnelli Jones fan. Baja, um, Pikes Peak. He just got to do a little bit of everything. And mm -hmm. I, I, I studied a lot of his family history and Paige and PJ Jones and Paige's career and how it, unbelievable race car driver he was and why don't you do pikes peak uh i would love to i want to do that i want to do the indy 500 and i want to do uh baja yeah just drop and it right king out the there hammer. and king of the hammers yeah. Jeez. anything else you you want to go I thousand, wanted, you go 300 miles 330 miles an hour in a drag yeah i mean i just asked tony <laughs> earlier <laughs> i said i could start with your junior drag team oh. <laughs> He's got to have a development program. Exactly. <laughs> I can start there. You'd fall asleep in that thing. It's yeah. too slow, man. Right. Well, if they're, they're planning on having a, a child, I can get it ready, tuned in for them. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Rico and Brew, the test driver for Tony Spur. Junior drag team. <laughs> CSR. <laughs> You know it goes straight. You don't get yeah, to the end of the thing and turn left. You see some of those guys change lanes. <laughs> Not that intentionally. Uh, we don't yeah. get you enough in the Freak Nation. No, we man. don't. Dude, he a... is so busy. He just yeah. rattled off his schedule. We man, need more Rico. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank you guys. You take car maintenance seriously, and you want to pass on that legacy of care. Use Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer to shield your engine from excessive heat, debris, and friction. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun. Featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. General Tire delivers.